material and surrounding air provides driving force for the cooling process. This is the equation for for work. Uh, it is used to uh, compute KV over. Next is mechanical cooling power. According to type of flow of air and water, and the third one will be reported by my co and European regulator. So, according to plant position, it should be harder to classify into the induced type and the force drop cooling tower. For the force drop cooling tower, the fan is located at the base of the tower, and the fan forces the air from the bottom to the top. Um, and to, to be able to eliminate the air that is uh, the water entrained in the towers, if the eliminators are used, this uh, force drop cooling tower creates a high entry and low exiting air velocities, which make it susceptible to recirculation. And um, with the, the fan being at the inlet, it is it becomes more susceptible to complications due to freezing conditions. Um, that's why it is usually uh, located inside or installed in doors. And another disadvantage for force drop cooling towers is that it requires more horsepower as compared to the induced drop cooling towers. For the induced drop cooling tower, the fan is located uh, at the top of the tower and uh, uh, it induces hot moist air out of the discharge and it produces low entering and high exiting velocities opposite to that of the force drop cooling tower. The air velocity is to reduce the possibility of recirculation of the unit vapor back into the tower, which make it advantageous for the tower. Uh, the only advantage and disadvantage of this type of tower is that it can only be installed outdoors. There, there, um, whereas it can can lead to easy wearing of the cooling tower. Um, the, another type of mechanical drop cooling towers according to type of flow of air and water. This is only applicable for an induced draft cooling tower and it further it can further be classified for cross flow or counter flow cooling towers. Um, for cross flow it indicates that uh, the flow is perpendicular to the water flow while for counter flow it means that the air flow is opposite to the direction of the water flow. For the counter flow design water is evenly distributed uh, by means of a distribution basin and uh, it falls off with the uh, use of gravity. While as for the counter flow design, it, uh, water is sprayed through pressurized nozzles and also flows through the gravity. Uh, the counter flow uh, occupies lesser space, thereof uh, making it taller than the cross flow tower. But a cross flow tower needs lesser fan power requirement compared to the outer flow because of the low pressure drop in relation to its capacity. And for the third type of mechanical drop cooling tower, may I call on this region?
102 degrees Fahrenheit in the hot water temperature and, and the cooking water is 78 degrees Celsius, which is here. We will connect the two points and then they will enter uh, inter finger at 70 degrees, which is the wind well temperature. And the two, two gallons per minute per square feet of water concentration. Now the given is 2,000 gallons per feet cube. We can get the tower area by dividing the given water flow rate by the water concentration. We will get 100 feet square. Uh, for the determination of power requirement for time to be used, based from the given performance of 100%, and 100% of performance, uh, we will connect, we will extend the, the line from 100 to the turning point and extend it to the horsepower per, per, per horsepower line to get the horsepower needed by the time. And then, uh, this is the image for the induced draft cooling tower. Uh, this includes uh, the parts of pan and motor, sprinkle pipes, housing panel, and water basin, fillers, and invented compound pipes. The pilot motors are usually weather proof to prevent rusting, erosion, and to minimize noise to the water output, and also for longer performance. My sprinkler, sprinkler pipes contain even space for related pipes causing the hot water to flow in the form of droplets. The housing and water basin is around the side of the permit, not so air intake regardless of wind direction. And this are made of plastics reinforced with fiberglass to ensure rust free and longer performance. The inlet and out outlet pipes are connected in the piping system of the pump and the AR. And the inlet contains the hot water and the outlet pipe contains the cold water. And lastly, the filler or the backing is located within the cooling tower where hot water and the sprinkler pipes pass through and toxic in contact with cold water coming from the bottom. This can be made from more efficient materials such as drastic rings and reducing pipes. So good afternoon. I will be discussing about the different parameters that we need to consider in operating a cooling tower. First is water makeup or makeup water. So makeup water requirements for cooling tower consists of the summation of evaporation loss, drift loss, and blow down. Therefore, we have this equation where WM is equal to the evaporation loss plus the loss due to drift and losses due to blow down. So what are these losses? First, if we have this this schematic diagram of cooling water system. We can see as in the top of the tower there occurs the evaporation. Evaporation occurs because of the heat exchange between the cold and hot water. Then we have the drift losses. Drift losses are losses due to the high velocity of the air. It is the water that, that goes out of the out of the cooling tower system without without heat exchange with the without being evaporated. So it goes out of the out of the cooling tower as the water particle. Then we have blow down. So this here's the blow down. In the blow down, blow down is needed in a cooling water system because we have eva evaporation losses. And due to evaporation, the salt the salt and metal concentration in our cooling tower tends to concentrate. And to avoid scaling due to high concentration of salt, we need to, to, to remove the water that has high concentration of mineral salts, then replace it with a mineral, with a makeup water. So that's it. So here's the equation to determine the to determine how much water should be 
provide for the evaporation loss. So WD is equal to 0 0.00085 of the circulating water flow times the inlet water temperature minus the outlet water temperature. So basically, the evaporation loss constitutes the heat exchange inside the cooling tower. Then the drip loss can be approximated with this by drip loss to be equal to 0 0.1 to 0 0.2 of the water supply to the, to the tower. So it is, the, it is about 0 0.1 to 0 0.2 of the total water being supplied inside the cooling tower. Then for the blow down, cycles of concentration are the ratio of the dissolved solids in their circulating water to be dissolved in the makeup water. So let's say this, the cycles would be equal to WP plus WP over WP or basically the blow down makeup water would be WP over cycles minus one. And so to give us a more view about the makeup water, we'll have a sample problem. So we have a given of we have a given inlet water flow in gallons per minute of ten thousand inlet water temperature one hundred degrees Fahrenheit, outlet water temperature of eighty five degrees Fahrenheit. The drift loss is zero point two percent, and concentration cycles is. 5%. So we will find what is the make of water. So this, we will go through the direct substitu substitution, where the evaporation loss is equal to 